from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in London, England for HPE Discover. This is Silicon Angles, The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest, Dominic Wild, Vice President of Global Product Line Management at HP Networking, Aruba. Welcome back to The Cube. Thank you, good to be here. Good to so see day you, three, things are rocking, it's pretty clear. The storylines, the, the four pillar areas, mm. um, our transformation areas are out. Yeah. HP Networking, you know, we love talking networking because yeah. One, we've, you guys have been on theCUBE all the time. Yep. Networking is where all the action is. SDN right. is evolving. Some yep. say not baked, some are saying it's more evolving fast. You got OpenStack in the cloud, big networking component. You got Aruba just really yep. crushing it on the wireless side. Yep. You leave by Stadium, great case study on stage. Yep. Wireless, wired, coming together. That's right. At the edge is wireless, wired in the network. Yeah. Give but us the update. Well, I mean, really what we've been um, looking at is, uh, you know, as we integrate sort of what was HP networking with Aruba, um, you know, creating a new networking organization, um, a lot of the focus with the, you know, with the Aruba acquisition was around, and the strategy was around um, bringing together the, the wired network and integrating the wireless network together and creating an access layer. Because, you know, as we move forward, wireless becomes a primary form of connectivity in the enterprise, and then in the future what you're going to get, you're going to get all these IOT devices, headless devices, some of which are still going to connect in a wired manner. You don't want to be having two different operational models for that, and so you want a sort of single policy management and security model, you want a single sort of analytics model, um, you want you know, the, uh, you know, the visibility, the troubleshooting, everything, all to be a single model. So you develop an access layer, and then it doesn't really matter what the connection medium is because you're going to be a, a policy driven access control and security. So, you know, if I expect something to be a sensor and suddenly it start ask, starts asking for patient records, I know there's a problem there because, you know, it's the policy was it's a sensor. So, so once the integration is done from a headcount standpoint, yeah. uh, and a selling motion standpoint, is that sort of job one from uh, development perspective is, is creating that single policy model, security model, yeah. analytics model? Yeah, I mean And, and has any of that work been pre-done with your earlier relationship? So, we'll talk about that a little bit. So, you know, yes, um, what, what we're starting with is we're starting by taking the, so the, the great thing about Aruba is they, they're not just about wireless. Um, Aruba is all about mobility. And it's about you know all the software pieces that go around wireless, like you know, policy and security, et cetera. A lot of software IP. Yeah, there's a lot of software IP. And so job one really is taking our switching infrastructure and bringing that under, for instance, the management layer, ClearPass, which is the security and policy layer, under you know, other tools, the analytics tools, um, our location tools, and bringing this all together and, and sort of truly knitting together and integrating the wired and the wireless together. So that's really job one. So as you know, we're, we're really bringing to market an end-to-end -end story in the campus. And, and that sort of single view of policy, security, yep. analytics comes as, as part of that, is that yeah, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's, it's just bringing it all under the same tool set. Dominic, can you talk about the rationale for the Aruba acquisition in, yeah. in terms of both the organizational and the market implications? Yeah, I mean, when, so when we looked at you know, the strategy uh, you know, uh, quite a while back now, what we recognized was that there was, gonna, you know, was a significant change about to happen in the market. The advent of 11, uh, 11 AC Wave 2 with multi-gigabit wireless was really going to be the first time that enterprises started to adopt uh, wireless as a primary connectivity medium. And, and what, what enterprises needed, while we already had a, you know, a very good wireless connectivity solution, what we didn't have was a mobility experience. And to actually go you know, build that is a very, very difficult thing to do. And so, you know, the reason really for, you know. Well, if you didn't have the wireless asset, your access method kind of is decoupled from the actual ability. It's, yeah, it's more of a traditional overlay. Yeah. So you take the wired network and you overlay wireless on it and they kind of disconnect it. So, you know, the idea was, well, you know, Aruba was, is, you know, was and is the leading mobility company um, and bringing all that software IP together with us as the number two switching vendor um, and creating a new entity that 
could integrate that as a solution and create what we call the mobile first infrastructure and the mobile first you know, um, vision uh, was, was what we set out to do. And we, you know, we're actually executing on that fairly quickly. You know, the product roadmap is defined. We, you know, we're completing some of those things uh, you know, right now. Um, so the first stages are already happening. There's a lot more work to do. Um, you know, there's so much opportunity in you know, the advent of IoT and wireless, so much going on. So if I were to say it fundamentally changes the strategy of HP networking, is that a fair thing to say? Absolutely. Because essentially I would have described it previously as okay, you're a good alternative to the number one you know, exactly. player, yeah. as opposed to now you're trying to change the game. Can That's you right. talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, the idea was, and I think you, you, you characterized it very well. Yeah, we were a great alternative to Cisco, and we did very well, growth was great, but, but you know, what we wanted to be was we wanted to be a leader, and you know, we are a, you know, a leader in terms of innovation. Because you know, if you're on the cutting and bleeding edge of innovation and you're really solving customer problems, I mean, today, most IT shops now are finding that line of business is actually defining what they need to do and that they are in partnership with line of business and, and they're creating true business outcomes and value for the customer. Yeah. You can't do that if you're just kind of following along in the industry. You have to be on the bleeding edge of innovation. Um, and there's so much to do in that sort of, you know, There's big data in there too, you, I mean, I, I think, Dominic, the wireless overlay issue is a huge deal. Yep. Eliminating the overlay, yep. huge BFD in my Absolutely. opinion. So that's uh, going to be a, big opportunity with yep. all the campus upgrades and yep. all the trans <laughs> all the refreshes it is. It and so is. It is. I'm excited to track that. Um, when I'm going to go a little deeper into the core now and get into SDN. So yep. take me through the SDN vision because everything's going right along. You got services led infrastructure, policy based, right. fill in the blank. Yep. Now yep. SDN, what does that fit in? So so software defined networking, I mean, first of all, you know, everybody's got a different idea of what SDN is. Um, so you know, m my definition of SDN is it's not a feature, it's not a product, it's, it's really a framework. It's a different way of looking at the network. So it really looks at the network as a system and defines a new control surface for it, which is programmatic. That to me is a simple explanation of what SDN is. So you know, it, it manifests itself in many, many different ways. Um, and so it's kind of like hybrid cloud, there's no one product skew. Right. It's built into how you deploy and manage. It is, and, and it's really all about, it's about automation and it's about making things dynamic. So, you know, networking has been static, set and forget for 25 years. Um, you know, <laughs> I SDN, love that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> SDN allows you to make the network dynamic and responsive um, and, and agile. So you, know, you can automate a lot more things, you can de derive you know, and pull out more of the value that already exists in the network. So in the context, for instance, of, you know, of mobility, there's already a lot of context information that the network holds. It already understands who the end user is. It understands where that user is. It understands what that user wants to do. So bringing that context out in a software-defined manner and being able to bring all that context together, it makes the job of defining policy and role-based controls much easier. So is that an efficiency benefit value? Is it a performance benefit? Is it con all so of the above? It's uh, security. It's efficiency. Um, but it, most of all, you know what we're seeing customers get excited about. It's enabling them to play a role themselves in generating new lines of business, new revenue streams, and being able to bring a much better experience to their user base while reducing the overhead, the operational overhead that it takes to you know, deliver these things. So Dave asked um, uh, all the guests, <laughs> Scott Weller, <laughs> we were talking about, we're not going to tell you what we said so you can get okay. your answer. <laughs> IOT is a big, big deal. Yes. And, and in general, networking is great. So I got to ask you first, generally speaking, um, before we get into IOT, what's the number one action item that you would say to, to a CXO, CIO, in terms of okay, the new normal in networking is end-to-end, -end. the overlays are challenging, when they make sense, they make sense, but if you can actually get pure end-to-end -end for policy to the true edge, right? Yeah. you can do some good things, so what, here's your action item, go do something. What are the three things that CIOs need to do? If they buy into, okay, I love the wireless front end, yeah. I love getting into the core to get some sort of network benefits around SD and all that good stuff, yeah. at the end of the day, I want to have the composable infrastructure and yeah. infrastructure as code and yeah. make a boatload of money from my apps and my teams are happy. Right. 
What's yeah. my action item for networking? So, I mean, so, you know, within the IoT framework, you know, with networking, I mean, I would say the number one thing is understand what the use case is that you, you, you want to do. I mean, it's, it's what is the business value that you want to derive. That is actually, people tend to jump the gun and try and sort of, you know, get to the implementation before they're understanding what business value they're deriving. Um, you know, a, a great example of this is, you know, what, what we've done in terms of uh, sensor networks, in terms of um, wayfinding and indoor GPS using uh, BLE sensors. So, you know, so we deployed this at uh, the Niner Stadium, um, but, you know, we've been talking to a lot of customers about this capability. So we, we, the 1.0 version of this was to use BLE sensors to be able to, to say, okay, I can get very accurate information about where a user is. And I can get them to subscribe to a service, use an app, and provide a digital map to help them find their way around in certain, certain circumstances. So at the Niners Stadium, I can tell them where the nearest bathroom is, where the shortest line is. I can help them to order food from their seat and have it delivered right there so they don't miss the game. So, you know, it's- By the way, that's not fantasy because John Paul, who runs uh, Venue Next, gave me a great tour and I was using right. the app. I had six, six second video replays yep. from every camera angle. Yep. And I go, I'm going to test the app, I bought a hat. Less than yep. six minutes, had the it's food. Amazing. It really is awesome. It, it's incredible. They know where people are parking, they can resell parking spots. I mean, right. it's, it's pretty badass, it's really it's, good. It's absolutely incredible, but you know, that's kind of, you know, that was 1.0 uh, of mobile engagement. 2.0 for mobile engagement is what we just announced yesterday, which is we recognize that, you know, 1.0, you had to have an Aruba wireless LAN infrastructure. But we recognize there was many customers who haven't yet depreciated their equipment, you know, their wireless equipment, right. uh, and it's a big effort for them to sort of rip and replace everything. But they really want, they have use cases in the healthcare, um, you know, retail spaces, you know, there's, there's all sorts of use cases where they can derive real business value and outcomes, and they want that, but they have to wait. So what we did was we did mobile engagement 2.0, and we've introduced a set of new sensors now that combine sensor and Wi-Fi, BLE and Wi-Fi, that can now communicate with any third party wireless infrastructure and allow people to use that, that sensor network as an overlay. Um, we've also introduced- Is there APIs built in for the data as well? Yeah, there is. So, so we've introduced business analytics as well, so as you can actually look at and monitor what is going on within that sensor network, dwell times, battery lives, all those kinds of things to make the operational issues easier. And we've also expanded the partner program. So there are APIs there for partners like Venue Next to come in and integrate and be best of breed and unlock that value. And so, you know, I expect that we'll have, you know, different verticals now, we'll have different SIs coming in wanting. This is why your point that. about knowing your business value is key, and Scott Weller, again, yeah. you know, would love this services-led infrastructure, and Absolutely. it sounds almost like a, um, you know, cliche, I mean, we've yep. heard that so many times, but yeah. more than ever, every company's different. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Venue next at Levi Stadium, or is it venue next in you know Live Nation? Right, is a completely different animal. Right, I mean, they resell services. Yep. So, yep. so no, okay. Absolutely. So IoT now. Back to IoT. Yep. What's your advice to customers on IoT, and it's, how would you define the true edge of the network? So I, I think the you know the, the edge of the network is whatever you make it. Um, I mean and it, you know I mean it's a, it's a fairly crappy answer, but but it is true. It's whatever you make it. As I said, you know, the lines are blurring. Um, you know, there is no longer that, that hard perimeter anymore. It's permeable. People can bring you know, their own devices. They can bring you know, uh, laptops and things that are corporate owned. And then sensors, sensors can be fixed. They can be mobile. They can be you know, many different things as well. So if you have a sea of sensors that are a combination of you know, fixed and mobile that I mean, you're doing many, many different things, you want to be able to, most importantly, you want to be able to manage that sea of sensors. You want to have the visibility, you want to be able to troubleshoot it, and then you want to be able to you know, sort through the data. So there's you know, a few different levels that, that you go through here, but the network facilitates all of that. And so what okay, so the makes, key word is network. Right. But so edge of the network is where the network goes, it stops. I mean, <laughs> a, a, sensor, a sensor on its own without a network is an island. It does nothing for you, you know. It, 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 well, it has a, a very defined okay. perimeter of what it can do for you, a personalized perimeter. Once you network sensors, that's where the power comes from. So, you know, once you're bringing all these things together, what you want to do then is you want to reduce the operational complexity of managing that sea of sensors. And the way to do that is to have 
a single umbrella of policy management, a single umbrella of security, a single umbrella of troubleshooting. And that is kind of what we bring to the table. Yeah. That's exactly what we're bringing to the table by just defining an access layer. So hey, when you say the edge of the network is whatever you make it, and you said, okay, that's not a great answer, but in fact, it's true. It's yeah. whatever assets you have there Absolutely. that are connected. Yep. And that yep. might be all the way out to the windmill. That's right. Or maybe not. Right. Where's so. the trouble spots for a CIO? Because there's two, there's two realities now. There's the, okay, I buying into the hype and vision that everything will be connected, which right. it will be at right. some point, but the phase one is the low hanging fruit. Yeah. So is the edge of the network, where, where, where's, where's the gotchas, where's the blind spots for the CXOs? Is it where there's no power, no internet? I and mean, there's yeah. always that, is there, is there problems there we're seeing? We were speculating earlier, that's our view of, if there's battery issues, no yeah. power, and network, well, I think that... How do you deal with those two new problems? Well, I think that, so to me, the biggest problem is that, that people believe that IoT is a new thing. It isn't. It's been around for 20, 20 and more years. If you look at HVAC systems and you know, lighting systems, building control systems, in global real estate organizations, they've been doing this for years. But they're on many, many different older standards. They have different power requirements. All of these things are already plumbed into buildings, and some of them are not able to or appropriate to connect through IP. So as we deploy new sensors, the new world of sort of IP-based sensors, we have to find a way to bring the old world and the new world together. And so, you know, from the old world, you know, what you want to be doing is kind of aggregating um, all those sensors onto a sort of IP gateway, yeah. as it were, bring it in into the IP world without actually having to physically change anything. Because ripping the guts out of a building is you know in, in all of these you know manufacturing yeah. buildings and things throughout the world is not going to happen. So you've got to you've got to accept that there is an old world of IoT out there that you have to integrate with and into. And that's one of the biggest challenges. The biggest challenges for people is to actually recognize that, understand you know what the cost there is and figure out how to bring the old world yeah. and the new world into it. Isn't it fair too the data model is different today. The data model is great. Yeah, the yeah. ability yeah. to actually deal yeah. with distributed data in a way that you yeah. can get meaningful yeah. insights out of it and act on it. Yeah, they I mean they it's have new. you know unique protocols and and you know there's all sorts of differences mm. here. Um, power is one big problem. It's, mm. uh, you know, how are you going to power all these things? And, uh, well, how are you? Battery? Is it well, yeah, I mean, you know, so yes, I mean, what we did with, you know, with our sort of, you know, mobility engagement sensors, our, our location sensors, is we chose to use BLEs. It's Bluetooth low energy um, that runs off a battery. It's completely independent. You don't need to hook up any power. So it enables you to put those sensors anywhere. Um, you know, they just stick up. Battery life the, estimated. The battery life is, you know, is, is you know beyond a year, is two yeah. years or so, and and so you know they they're very low energy. They can go on for a while. Well, now we've brought in this analytics capability to that network. I can monitor all the batteries. I can have alarms on the batteries. I can plan for and set thresholds and say when a battery hits twenty percent, tell me so as I can forward plan. Put into the rollout months. plan. Yeah. yeah. The um, truck roll. Yeah, so <laughs> you know you, you can now manage this in a meaningful way, which you know you couldn't before. And so. but they got to build that into their operational cost model. You do, you do, and uh, but the benefit you get in terms of the return on investment it's in terms of the, yeah the yeah. services that you can enable. Yeah. I mean, things like you know, um, booking meeting rooms. I mean, uh, you know, at any organization, uh, we, we talk about customers. Every customer yeah. just nods and says, "Oh yeah, getting a meeting room is terrible." <laughs> uh, we work with a company called Robin, um, who who do a sort of console outside all the meeting rooms and have a sort of back end system that allows you to do sort of dynamic, just in time meeting room booking. So that it's like it's like meeting rooms for you know Uber for meeting rooms. Um, so you look on your mobile device at the app and you say, "Hey, I need a meeting room for five people." It shows you all the meeting rooms that are available near you. You say, I want one. Here are the constituents I want to bring to this meeting in 10 minutes. They get an invite, but they also get a GPS indoor map that shows them how to get to that meeting room. And you sure. turn up, if it's occupied, hey, I'll just pick another meeting room. Yeah. Um, it's that easy. Yeah, I mean. Cancel, that's like Uber. So, so, yeah. the, so the things that the rooms don't come to you, you go to the rooms. Yeah. The, uh, but that brings up a good point. This is the value. Understanding the, the cost benefit Mm -hmm. Not doing IoT for IoT's sake, yep. but understanding, hey, there's value there. Yeah. It's worth doing it yep. versus the blind ambition right. of saying, hey, you know, or not doing it, right? Right. I mean, right. Levi so, Stadium's different than it is. It stadiums is. that don't have. What I mean, they I've, have. I've spoken to a lot of healthcare companies here, just coincidentally, um, and uh, you know, the, there's sort of a pattern emerging. You, there, there is some risk, right? So in a, in a hospital environment, there's there's probably some things that you don't want to wireless enable that you know you want to make sure stay wired. You know, I mean, 
actually some hospitals were saying all their surgery facilities are wireless already, but some hospitals don't want to do that yet. They, they have a different risk. Sort of, is it um, RF or potential. Just, just fear? Is well, it fear or is it RF interference? It, it, it's, well, it's RF interference, but it, it's, it's, it's really is fear. It's they, they haven't had the experience <laughs> yeah. to gain the confidence in, in the technology. But you know, in your office areas and in your guest areas and your outpatient areas and everything, what you want to be able to do and what they do want to do is use location technologies to be able to provide a much better service to the patients and make it easier for their nurses and doctors to work and make them more efficient. The return on that is huge and is easily calculated. Yeah, I mean, they could do triage on patients while right. they wait. So because <laughs> we Fitbit define, action. yeah, I mean, we, 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 we <laughs> define a, an access layer, you can have a combination of wired and wireless yeah. and you can bring this all under the same policy. It's I a thought. huge big data opportunity and that's the nuance it of is. this. Yeah. It's not the purchase price of the, of the access points anymore. Right. It's the overall solution. I mean, you it's, look at the, the RFPs for our wireless bids. Well, yeah. there's big deals like e right. bars, but these small in comparison to the value. It is. I mean, it it's is. the number one requested feature yeah. by consumers. Yeah. Better Wi-Fi. Better Wi-Fi. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Hands I mean, down. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and and once you go, I mean, you know, let, let's face it. I mean, we're addicted to data, right? I mean, we, yeah. I mean, the whole world is addicted to data. I mean, this is why we're buying so much storage, which is a you know a wonderful thing. Um, but you know, sorting through all that and actually deriving the value out of that data, um, doing that in an intelligent way, and but but bringing the context that enables yeah. you to really sort of pinpoint the value that you want. You yeah. know, thing, the, the user ID, which we've never done before in networking. A user has always been identified by the port they plug yeah, into. Yeah, support. It's never about the Personal user Personal area, identity. Bluetooth networks, you're going to see right. all the devices connected. Right. It's funny, I, I'm going to wrap, but I want to tell you a quick story. So I went over to a friend's house um, to have some cocktails and, and, and dinner, and he was walking me, give me a tour around his house, and he's like, RJ45, right. I wired the whole house with fiber. I use two ports. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, so this is back, you know, this is back 15 years ago, right. you know, at the walls, he's just, I'm wiring everything for fiber, I'm never going to have a bandwidth problem. This is during the dial up internet yeah. days, right? <laughs> and guess what? He doesn't use any of it. Any of it, <laughs> of course. So, well, I'll so tell you. the point, everyone's going wireless. Yeah. Campuses are the same way. Yeah, well, I'll tell you a funny story. My <laughs> whole house is wired as well, I don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but, that, but this is the trend, right? I mean, this, yeah. so now the networking of the networking becomes the, the back to the problem. Again, yeah. the overlay, yeah. It's a big deal. I think you guys have great differentiator with Aruba. Yeah, and so and we do. But, but also, you know, let's not forget that you know we're also in the cloud business. We're in the data center business. Yeah. So you know, we have our mobile first architecture and our cloud first architecture. So we're participating with the HPE Synergy team and and working on the you know the fabrics there and uh, bringing networking value, continuing to bring networking value into you know the cloud arena. So um, wireless is the big bet in networking, leveraging the existing assets, which yeah. has always been strong with that networking with HPE, yeah. with wireless. Um, we like Composable, we think Composable is going to be mm -hmm. uh, a big payoff like Converge Infrastructure. Yep. We were here yep. when um, Converge Infrastructure was announced. Right. And it was right. like, well, Converge Infrastructure. Remember yeah. that, Dave? People were like, CI. Well, yeah. A lot of people were like skeptical yeah. about it. Yeah. Now look yeah. at it, right? Yeah. So, Composable, same thing. Well, Composable is, big I mean, bet. you know, Converge was generation one, Hyperconverge generation two, Composable generation three. Evolutionary or revolutionary? I think both actually. Uh, I mean, you know, my opinion is that actually Composable was, will subsume everything that went before uh, in the fullness of time. Um, but I, I do think it is revolutionary, yeah. I mean, you know, just having that ability to have a simple, you know, fluid pool of resources and, and a template driven ability to just, you know, deploy applications in seconds just with, you know, with one yeah. click. Um, I mean, you know, the operational model has just been turned on its head. Um, you know, and also being able to have that really granular sort of like ability to sort of say, hey, um, this is you know the type of storage I want, the type of compute I want. Um, you know, that's that is is quite revolutionary. Um, you know, we're really proud to be you know to be working yeah. with the uh, the composer. It's a great road there. to cloud native too for if you are existing yeah. legacy stuff. Yeah, you don't have to rip and replace. You can take a small small that's road. Right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, we are here live in theCUBE, talking networking, talking Aruba, talking big data, talking IoT. Be right back with more big data on theCUBE here. Uh, Dominic, thanks for your insight Thank here you. inside theCUBE, uh, delivering uh, the value of in the data. It's all in the content here on theCUBE. Be right back with more from HPE Discover, live in London after the short break. <laughs>